Hi Bio30. In this video we're going to be talking about how uh, impulse goes down a neuron. So this is what a neuron looks like. We've drawn it in class. I'm just going to quickly label it so we remember the parts. So we have our dendrites, the cell body, we have the myelin sheath that wraps around the axon, and in between the myelin sheath we have nodes of Ranvier, and then we have the axon endings. So in this video I'm going to be zooming in just on what's happening on the axon. So again, nodes of Ranvier are between. We're going to be zooming in right on that area. So right here we have the axon in the middle. Okay, It does have a top and a bottom uh, membrane. We're going to be just looking at the top membrane and there is cytoplasm in the middle. So when I refer to the inside of the axon, it is this fluid filled space between the top and the bottom part of the axon. These diagrams you're going to be drawing on the page that's titled Neural Transmission. There's three boxes. You're going to draw three separate diagrams, one at rest, one at action potential, and one at during the recovery period. So before you draw anything, I'm just going to kind of go through the general idea of the diagram. So don't draw anything yet. I'll tell you when to start drawing. Just like any other cell membrane, it would be a phospholipid bilayer. I'm not going to worry about drawing the phospholipid bilayer because the diagram itself will get really complicated. I'm just going to draw some of the membrane proteins that allow ions in and out of the cell. So the first one we have is a channel that allows sodium into the axon. And I have passive written because passive requires no energy. It's going to be using a concentration gradient. So if there's a whole bunch of sodium on this side of the axon, it will naturally want to flow into the axon. Okay, we also have a potassium channel. Again, uses passive transport. It's going to be allowing potassium out of the axon by opening and closing. And we also have a sodium and potassium pump. It uses active transport. Okay, so it's going to be requiring ATP in order to go against the concentration gradient. This sodium and potassium pump spins and every time it spins, you see I have these three little semicircles. Those are where sodium can attach to. So every time it spins, three sodium can actually leave the axon. And then two potassium can attach and go into the axon. So every time it's rotating, it's basically rotating constantly throughout this whole process. So every time three sodium are going to be leaving, two potassium are coming in. Three sodium are leaving, two potassium are coming in. In the first box, during rest, I want you guys to draw this outline. Notice that the sodium channel and the potassium channel are slightly open. Okay, that's going to be important. The potassium pump is in the middle. Remember, it's always constantly spinning, allowing three sodium out and two potassium in. Okay, make sure you label the outside and the inside as well. So I'm going to get started on filling in this diagram. So we have one sodium coming in because it's just slightly open this channel to allow only one ion in at a time. If it was open a little bit wider, more could come in, but because it's only slightly open, only one sodium can fit through. Remember, three sodium are going to be leaving. So as this is happening, okay, it's going to build up a concentration on the outside of the axon um, because one's coming in and three is leaving. So three... Obviously, because it's a bigger number, you're going to build up a larger concentration on the outside. Now, at the same time, one potassium ion is going to be leaving through the channel, and two are going to be coming in. So you're going to have a little bit of a buildup, a little bit more of a buildup of potassium on the inside than on the outside. But because all of your potassium is positive, and so is the sodium, okay, we notice that we have a large amount of positive on the outside of the membrane. Okay, we have a smaller amount of positive on the inside of the membrane. So if I was going to attach a node to figure out the difference in um, the difference in charge between the outside and the inside to measure the voltage, because I have such a great number of positive on the outside than on the inside, I end up actually with a negative charge. So to calculate this, I have to take the inside charge and subtract it from the outside. So the inside charge on the last side, I actually had five sodium and potassium ions. The outside I have 12. So again, this is all hypothetical. You would have way more ions than 5 and 12. I'm just using hypothetical numbers just to get you guys to understand the idea behind this. So positive 5 minus a positive 12 equals negative 70. So that's how we would end up with a negative 70 in rest. Okay. So it's really important for you guys to understand that during rest, 
the actual name that your diploma will use is called polarized. So I make sure you write down that it's called polarized somewhere in that box. That's really, really important to remember. That's the word that your diploma is always going to use. And the reason it's called polarized is because it has that negative charge built up. There's so much positive on the outside and such a little amount of positive on the inside. We end up with that negative 70. So that's why we get the name polarized because we have that negative charge. So I'm just going to quickly review with you guys what's happening at rest or polarization. So remember the sodium channel is slightly open. One sodium is coming into the axon at a time. The sodium potassium pump is always spinning. Three sodium are leaving and two potassium are coming in. And the potassium channel is slightly open as well. One is going out. So as that happens, we're building up a positive on the outside and we end up with that negative 70 millivoltage. So now we're going to move into the next stage, which is action potential. Okay, during action potential, we get a signal and basically what happens is on the axon, all of the sodium channels open wide and the potassium channels close. So when that happens, because there's all of the sodium on the outside, it's going to naturally want to move into the axon. So I want you guys to draw it like this with a whole bunch of arrows. Okay, so you can draw a bunch of sodium on the outside with a bunch of arrows coming to the inside. That's how a concentration gradient works. It doesn't require energy, it's passive because all of the sodium wants to get onto the other side. If you squish a whole bunch of people into a bus, for example, okay, when a, the door opens the bus and it's time to get off, your natural instinct is wanting to leave the bus. You don't want to be packed in with a whole bunch of people. It's uncomfortable, it's smelly. Okay, nobody really likes doing that. Same with the sodium. They don't really like hanging out with a whole bunch of other sodium on this side. So when there's space for them to get through, they're all going to start to stampede through. So that is what action potential is. Now remember the sodium potassium pump is going to be working at the time. So always um, removing three and adding two. So three sodium and adding two potassium. But if there's like a thousand sodium coming in and three being removed, is it really going to make a big difference? No. Okay. It would be like when we have a flood in Medicine Hat and you go down to the South Saskatchewan River and the river water is super, super high and you're like, hey, I'm going to do a good deed and I'm going to try to help out. And you take a little ice cream bucket and you try to take out some of the water and throw it onto shore. Your little ice cream bucket is going to do absolutely nothing in the flood. Okay. It's just basically going to not even make a dent in the amount of water that's flowing in the river. Okay, same idea. There's so much sodium flowing into the axon that just slight amount is leaving. It's not going to make a difference. And then on the other side of the pump, allowing two of these in, notice that the potassium channel is now closed. So it's no longer going to be able to get out. So all the potassium that was originally on the outside is going to be forced inside. Okay, and it's not allowed to leave. So we're going to build up eventually a really large amount of positive on the inside of the axon. So it's going to look like this eventually. Okay, in your diagram, you can leave it looking like this though, just so that you remember what it kind of started as. So eventually at the end of your action potential, it's going to start looking like this. And if I was going to measure that, I'm going to look at seeing a positive charge. Um, like around positive 35 to positive 40 millivolts. So we went from a negative 70 when it was polarized, and now we're on a positive side. So now we call it depolarized. It's the opposite. It's no longer a negative, which is what polarized described. It's positive now, so it's the opposite. It's now depolarized, which means the opposite. So again, just a review of what's happening. Our sodium channel is going to be wide open. Sodium's flooding in. Sodium potassium pump is always doing the same thing, removing three sodium, adding two potassium, and our potassium channel is closed. So we're building up a positive on the inside of the axon. We end up with a positive 35 or positive 40 millivolts during depolarization. Again, depolarization is super important to remember. Okay, this wave of depolarization is going to go along the axon, kind of like a wave of dominoes. If you push one domino over, it just starts to have that happen. So one sodium channel is going to open, 
Okay, the sodium is going to flow into the axon, which is a cytoplasm. It's going to go to the next sodium channel, and that one's going to open, and then the next one's going to open, and then the next one's going to open until this entire depolarization goes across the axon to the next neuron. So we don't want to stay like this all the time. We do want to go back to polarized or back to rest. So we have to do a process to get back to that point. Okay, we don't want to stay like this all the time. Um, this would cause a tremor if your sodium channel was constantly open, you're constantly um, thinking that you're getting an impulse. We have to go back to normal before we can receive another impulse. We have to get there by doing a certain process. So this process is called the recovery period. You can also call it the refractory period. And we also call it repolarization, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So during this process, we want to get rid of all of the potassium that's built up on the inside. So we're going to open the potassium channel this time wide. And the sodium channel is going to slam closed. We don't want to allow any more positives to come in because we eventually need to get back to that negative 70, which had a bigger positive on the outside. So no more sodium comes in. We want to get rid of the potassium by going out and then remember that the sodium potassium pump can allow some sodium out it's just going to take a little bit longer so we're going to do this in two steps the first step is going to be this potassium channel opening wide and allowing potassium out in a kind of a flood this is going to happen really really quickly because again it's going to be like a stampede of potassium they don't like being uncomfortable on the side there's not a lot of room for them to move around it's it's crowded it's hot it's smelly they want to get through the gate to the other side of the membrane so they're going to do that really really quickly that's part one when this happens um, remember of course our sodium potassium pump is still working but remember it's like the flood in medicine hat if you take your ice cream pill you have a thousand leaving and two coming in it's not going to balance out you're still going to have more leaving than you are coming in and because this is happening so quickly when you do this okay and all of those potassium start to leave you actually overshoot the millivoltage you're supposed to get to negative 70 you overshoot it a little bit at negative 90 so then we're going to in part two allow the sodium pump to start to work its magic and allow three to leave at a time and when we do that three by three by three we're going to get to a charge back at negative 70. so this process of going back to polarization or rest is called repolarization because you're going back there you're repolarizing it so again let's just go through what's happening at each spot so sodium channels closed nothing's coming in our sodium potassium pumps always removing three sodium adding two potassium our potassium ch channel is open wide, having that flood of potassium leaving. Okay, but remember we're doing this kind of in two parts. Part one is the potassium leaving, and part two is the sodium potassium pump allowing the sodium to go onto the outside. Okay, going back to negative 70. So our charge at this point during repolarization or the recovery period or the refractory period goes from negative 90 at the start and then during part two uh, to negative 70 again. So that is repolarization. So this would be kind of what it would look like. Remember, I was just showing you small sections, just the top membrane. Okay, this is what it would look like, the axon, if it was unmyelinated and if I zoomed in on the membrane proteins. So basically what would happen is that wave of depolarization, that's our action potential, it would be traveling from this side of the axon to the other side. So basically, our depolarization would start at the very beginning. Okay, sodium would flood in. It would move to the next sodium channel, which would cause it to flood in there. And we would then move into depolarization in the next stage. Okay, the previous one that was going through depolarization is now going to be repolarized because it's going to go back to normal. Okay, that depolarization is going to move. And repolarization is going to happen on the one, okay, because we want to go back to normal. Now this one is back to normal, so it's polarized. So we're going to continue to move down and down and down and down until it reaches the axon ending, which it would then pass to the next neuron. And this neuron would then be completely done with depolarization and ready for the next impulse. So that is basically how an impulse happens on the neurons. If you have any questions, please let me know. You are going to have to draw on your drawing quiz just the three diagrams of it at rest, 
during action potential, and during recovery. And you should have an idea of the charge, the really fancy name, so polarized versus depolarized versus repolarized. And also make sure you can explain to me the movement of the ions at each part. So please have a wonderful evening. I will see you all tomorrow.